In previous videos, we learned that for spontaneous processes, the entropy of the universe must increase based on the equation delta S universe equals delta S system plus delta S surroundings. We also learned that the entropy change for the surroundings is equal to the negative of the enthalpy change for the system divided by the temperature in Kelvin units. If we substitute this into the previous equation, we find that the entropy change for the universe is equal to the entropy change of the system minus the enthalpy change of the system divided by the temperature. This allows us to determine the spontaneity of a process using information only about the system we are studying. We can further rearrange this equation by multiplying both sides by negative t, so we get a new equation, which is delta H system minus T delta S system, and this is equal to a new term we call the Gibbs free energy. The change in the Gibbs free energy for a system is equal to the enthalpy change minus the Kelvin temperature times the entropy change for the system. Since we have three different terms that are energy units, we need to make sure that each of those are in similar units. Gibbs free energy and enthalpy are typically found in kilojoules, and so we'll need to convert the entropy change, which is usually in joules per Kelvin, into kilojoules per Kelvin. Since the Gibbs free energy change is proportional to the negative entropy change for the universe, that means we can use the Gibbs free energy change to help us determine the spontaneity. This is represented in the figure here. If the Gibbs free energy change is positive, that means that the reaction in that direction is going to be non-spontaneous. However, if the Gibbs free energy change is negative or less than zero, that means that that reaction in that direction will be spontaneous. If the Gibbs free energy change is zero, that indicates that the system is at equilibrium. Because delta H, delta S, and the Kelvin temperature T are used in calculating the value of the free energy change, we can make predictions about the spontaneity of a reaction if we know the signs of the enthalpy change and entropy change, and we also know the relative magnitude of the Kelvin temperature. Let's see how this is done in a few different examples. In this case, let's consider the reaction two moles of N2O gas react to produce two moles of N2 gas and one mole of O2 gas with an enthalpy change of negative 163.2 kilojoules. In this case, we're given the enthalpy change and we note that the enthalpy change is negative. By examining the equation, we can predict that the entropy change will be positive because we have two moles of gas on the reactant side and it produces three moles of gas on the product side, thus leading to an increase or positive entropy change. So will this overall reaction be spontaneous? We can begin our analysis by writing the equation to calculate the free energy change. So we have delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We can then note the signs for the enthalpy and the entropy change. So the enthalpy change is negative and the entropy change is positive. Since the entropy change is part of a negative T delta S, that means the negative sign will change the sign of the T delta S term. So we have a negative delta H plus a negative T delta S. This means that the delta G is going to be the result of a negative plus a negative, or in other words, the delta G is going to be negative or spontaneous at all temperatures. No matter what the value of the temperature is, we'll always have, in this case, a negative and a negative leading to a spontaneous reaction whenever we have a negative enthalpy change and a positive entropy change. Let's look at another example. In this case, the process where liquid water changes into solid water, such as the case when liquid water freezes. In this situation, we have an enthalpy change of negative 6.01 kilojoules. So we know that the enthalpy change is negative. What would we consider about the sign of the entropy change? Since we're going from a liquid to a solid, we would predict the entropy change is going to be negative or less than zero. 
So is this process going to be a spontaneous process? When we write out the equation delta g equals delta h minus t delta s, we would note that the sign of the enthalpy change is negative, and the sign of the entropy change is also negative. Since the entropy change is part of the negative t delta s term, the negative sign would change the negative t delta s term to a positive value. Now we have delta g equals a negative plus a positive. So what's the sign of the delta g term going to be? In this case, the delta g term depends on which value is larger, the delta h term or the t delta s term. If the t delta s term is smaller, for example, at lower temperatures, then the negative delta h term will have a greater influence on the sign, and delta g will be negative at low temperatures. And therefore, the free energy change will be negative, indicating a spontaneous reaction at low temperature. This should be expected because we can think that water will spontaneously freeze or go from liquid to solid state at low temperatures. By now, you should be able to go through the similar types of analysis for a reaction that has a positive enthalpy change and a negative entropy change. You might also want to go through this exercise to predict what will happen for a process that has a positive enthalpy change and a positive entropy change. By now, you should be able to determine if a process is spontaneous based on the sign of the Gibbs free energy change. You should also be able to use the signs of the enthalpy change and entropy change to predict if a given process is going to be spontaneous.